Now, ladies and gentlemen, set to make his way to the cage, presenting Dan Coates. Making his way to the cage, Fight Sports Dan Coates. And Chris, 24 years of age, as he said, rising stars in the making here. Unbeaten in two, one win and one draw. And he said in preparation for this back tonight, he's been working on his boxing and said to look for his left cross. But the most important thing he sees in his favor is he believes he has a no quit mentality. Yeah, the confidence of Dan Coates is what sticks out to me. Came in also at 146, right at the limit of the featherweight division. So really wanted to go out there and work on his boxing for this camp. He's got two fights, his opponent is making his debut. So I think Dan needs to go out there Take note of that improvement, also hold faith in his experience differential, and go out there and show who's boss right from the word get-go. And now, introducing to the cage, presenting Dardan Gashi. And his opponent will be Dardan Gashi from Team Titan. We've mentioned about the youthfulness of the car, but at 17, probably one of the youngest here tonight. And do you know what I love about the matchmaking here tonight? We, we, we've, we've talked about his opponent working on the boxing. Now, we've got a young man here that came into MMA from boxing, and what's he done for this fight? He's worked on his wrestling. Can you get a better matchmaking or, or clash of styles than that, Chris? Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a theme as well tonight because we saw so many fighters who are kind of like one, two, three fight vets. In this case, Dardan making his debut, but they always seek to address those problems early rather than become a specialist and try to ride that late into a career or be known as the guy who knocks you out with the hands or be known as a great kicker who just runs and tries to use ring space. He said, look, I'm going to look at where I can improve my area where my opponent might try to exploit me and make that as high level as possible. And at 17, the sky is the limit for this kid. A little bit of an unofficial fan poll, and you can hear the fans in the crowds this kid is actually the favorite in the fan poll here at Rise of Champions, so we're going to see if he can deliver. One Punch Promotions in association with Muff Liquor Company and Whip Street Motors presents Rise of Champions. Now set for three three-minute rounds in the amateur featherweight division. We introduce first the blue corner. He stands about 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighed in at 146 pounds even. His debut, his amateur record stands. A single win and a single draw. He fights out of Fight Sports Gym, presenting Dan Coates. <laughs> and across the cage in the red corner, at five feet, 10 inches tall, he weighed in officially at 156 and one half pounds. His debut as an amateur, he fights out of Team Titan, presenting Dardan Gashi! When the action begins, your referee in charge, Sam Amidi. So Chris, when you look at the two young men in the cage and across the cage from each other, Dan Coates has got that man body fully developed. Darden Gashi, you can see, still a lot of development in him at only 17. So in terms of body shape, they look different, but um, there's still so much more, you think, growing possibly to come from Gashi. Interesting to see that wrestling right away from Coates. Outside trip and straight to the mat. Sam the Man Amidi in charge in the red corner. Now off his back, Dardan Gashi in the blue corner, Dan Coates. Wow. Is that exactly what Gashi expected? I think perhaps not. I agree with you. I think not because what Gashi said prior to the bout was he expects a man that wants to stand and bang with him. And that's why he's working on the wrestling. So what does Coates do? He takes him straight down. Yeah. And going straight for the neck as well. He thought about maybe trying to catch an arm and choke. But right now this is actually smart because he can threaten that arm and technique. But more importantly, that exposes the knees. Because at this point, gosh, he's got to make a decision, right? Do I fight that choke or do I try to block the knees and then maybe give it my neck? Much better here, though. Double unders here for Dardan Gashi. And now Coates pressed up against the wire. Yes, Dardan looking for that single leg. And now a reversal, Chris. And, but there again, look at Coates' movement. I think you're right. Coates has shocked Gashi with his grand game. Had outside single there for Gashi. But as he tried to run the pipe and snapped down on that leg, turning away from the cage, he kind of gave up his back. He turned the wrong way in. 
And again, that's the thing. It really highlights the importance of posture when in those wrestling positions. It's all about positioning and entry and footwork and all those other key details because this can happen so quickly. Well, you talk about positioning. This is a very good match. Now, I like the way that Darden Gashi is bucking there, really bucking well. But positional-wise, it was a good moment there for Coates. And I think that Darden Gashi's game plan was to weather the boxing storm, take his man down and see what he's, he's got. And that was turned on its head from the opening 10 seconds. Gashi did really well, though, to buck and try to recover. He actually thought about attacking the leg when Coates had him mounted, but he was able to now re-guard. He had close guard for a moment. Coates tried to get that knee slice pass, now stuck in half. Open half guard from the bottom for Gashi. Coates trying to stay as deep as possible here. And I think it's really good and smart that he's making him feel the weight. Every single time he flattens him down, pins his shoulders, slides higher. You'll notice that that pass opens up when he breaks him down and keeps him flat to the canvas. There we go. Beautiful stuff. Sliding to the full mount again. This is the worst position, and now the second time Gashi has found himself here. And we did mention as well, we mentioned about using his weight and forcing that weight. He's got full man weight there, 24 years of age. Pushing Gashi up against the cage. It's been a torrid opening round for the Team Titan young man. And he's going to have to take some ground and pound here, Chris. Punches coming down here. Dan Coates looking to close the show. Ten seconds left. Can Gashi survive? Sam Amini watching carefully. Good punches, but again, Gashi just such a scrambly guy. Either walks off the fence or inverts with those legs up. A cagey performance for sure, and a frustrating performance, I think, in the way of Gashi. Not what he expected, certainly not what he wanted, but good stuff from Dan Coates. Making his debut had a game plan, expected a certain way the fight went, and I think that lack of experience showed. I know it's only two bouts more experience, but it can be vital, because I think Darden Gashi, it got under his skin, he was shocked. Coates, as you said, did the right thing, really worked him hard. The only thing I could say in Gashi's favor was he did not make it easy at any moment. Really bucked and wriggled and worked, especially when the ground and pound was coming down. He made sure that Sam Amidi had no reason to stop it. Yeah, I agree. And that's an important thing. When you're a young fighter, you have to learn to not accept the takedown, not accept bad positions, especially early in the fight, because we can see those effects when Dan caught him out. He landed some really solid punches. So the big thing, I think, Kangashi staff is back in the second. It starts in the feet. We'll see two or three coming. No way. So round two, and will Darden Gashi get any opportunity to show that boxing that he started his career with? Because for me, Darren Coates, totally in control of the opening round, Chris. Coates now standing southpaw, and again, just bull rushes into the takedown. Lazy single kick from Gashi, he cannot throw those. Those single techniques can work when your footwork is in correctly, and you're in and out, and you're moving, and you're setting them up, and. Maybe your opponent breaks stance or something along those lines, but this is not good. Under 30 seconds, and I think that Coates is going to be able to drag him down. Belly to back here. Coates going to try to either climb on his back or get the pick up. Here we go. And this is what we mentioned earlier about having your full man strength. Just 17 at the moment, Darden Gashi, which hints at a huge future. But when it comes to tonight and the strength on the night, you can see that Darren Coates is really asking big questions of this young man. Yeah, and he's showing that experience differential as well. When you've got X amount of rounds, more than your opponent, two fights, so that's a lot of experience. That's training camps, that's game planning, that's all of those little details. And Right now, I think that's paying dividends. And no losses. As he said, this no-quit mentality. He, he's already learned his third fight in, that winning mentality. Yeah, exactly. You win and you learn. So despite being 1-0-1, -oh not exactly winning every single fight, but he's gone in there and he's made sure he's applied all those lessons. And that's what I love about his mentality. And that's what he was so vocal about coming in. It's one thing when a guy says, this is what I'm good at and this is why you should pick me to win. But right now, he's showing off that confidence and he's showing off the differential. That being said, though, Gashi looks like a dangerous guy on the outside, and he showed some education and looking for those leg locks uh, when he was caught in mount in the first round, but right now he's just kind of getting big brothered around. Beautiful Uchimata there. That being said, the fans really showing a roar of appreciation there for Gashi. I think this is where Gashi envisaged it ending up 
later rather than sooner after some upright exchanges where his own boxing would come into play. And then I feel he always felt that he would initiate the takedowns just like this. But this has been halfway through at least the second round, the first opportunity for him to do so. Inside low kick, 10 second clapper, both fighters exchange. Forward pressure here from Coates. Can he get the tie up? Not much time on the clock. Good stuff in defense from Gashi, circling away from the wire. Both men continue to probe. Open stance, southpaw versus orthodox. And again, the, the real point to be made here is despite being taken down once more, as we reach the end of the second round, whatever mistakes he's made, whatever inexperience, Gashi is still there. And we talk about the no-quit mentality. Well, he's displaying that as well. There we go. Two in the books, Gashi on top. Coates looks a little bit tired. He's set a frenetic pace here, and you know Gashi's been able to have at least some element of an answer for those positions, certainly getting taken down a couple of times, but a more even round, in my opinion. More even? I, I would still err on the side of Coates across both rounds, but this is what I liked about Gashi. He survived. He's got that no-quit mentality as well and started to show, as you said, when we had the Orthodox versus Southpaw, nice little right to the body from him. He had the moment with the, with the excellent little reversal. With one round still to go, there's still hope. He's worked his way into this bout much, much more cleanly now in the second round than the total dominance of the first. Yeah, I agree. And the key thing is going to be, what's the evolution of the game plan? Now, you've had two rounds to read your opponent, try to figure out some of the things they're trying to do to you, things you've got to do in back. So I think it's going to come down to that in the third, and whether or not Gashi can stay off his back for most of it and do some significant damage. Well, there's also a slight hint that Darren was shocked he was still there and was just beginning to run out of ideas towards the end of that round as well. So it'll be interesting to see both men's game plan coming into this third. For me, Coach has just got to survive it, but that's just an unofficial scorecard. I'd like to see, as you said, how Gashi now progresses from that second to this third. Third and final round here in London, Rise of Champion 6. Chris Hookstra alongside Malcolm Martin. Thank you so much for tuning in. Another amateur bout here, and what about it has come to be here in the third round as Gashi throwing those kicks, but again, Dan Coates charges forward, and I love the way he runs him across the whole ring. We got a 30-foot cage here, a lot of space. We can back your opponent up like that. There's only one way they're going, Malcolm. That's down to the floor. Yes, he was committed. He took the, he took the head kick first, took the body kick, and on the third, as you said, he made up his mind. And with this size cage, he really poured forward. It's only going to end up in one position. And for me, the neutrality says, I don't care who wins. But in terms of watching the development, it's a shame for Gashi that that ended so quickly. But fair play to Coates for recognizing the danger at the end of round two yeah. and his adaptation. Yeah, it's an opportunistic takedown and a catastrophic outcome, being caught in mount again very early. We've seen him escape a couple of times. Gashi's got the chops to get out of here, but it's not exactly the place you'd like to work from. And this is a nice solid mount this time as well, because he's got good balance, good base here for, because Gashi in the first two rounds really bucked hard and hurtful. But again, I like the learning curve for both men. Coates has really learned as well. And laying heavy on his man here now. Gashi trying to walk off the fence, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do that because he doesn't have quite the pop and the leverage that he'd like to get. And I think that Coates knows the tactic now, which is why he's trying to take him down off the cage, but make sure he puts him in the middle of the ring. It's a lot more difficult to get back up. Cage can be your friend and your enemy. We say it all the time. Every single time we commentate MMA, but this is a great example because what Dan Coates has done is he's obviously used the cage or run his opponent to the cage to take him down. Once you get him down then, sometimes it's better to put him in the middle of the ring here like this or at least away from the fence, That's so we right. can't fence walk up. And look at this. Gashi's gonna try to slide over here. Coates knows this. He's gotta stay busy and punch, but now Gashi might be able to have a better way to get back up to his feet. Oh, that's the gamble, though. Do you give your back? And that's what he's done here, Chris. And he's tapped, as you said, it was a gamble. It hasn't paid off for him. And Coates, as you said, very confident, gets the win, he's happy about it. Um, Gashi, we saw in each of the rounds, what Coates did well was give him limited choices, but each time he had those choices, they were a risk. And it was beautiful to see the fact that Dan Coates, in my opinion, his greatest asset in that fight was staying opportunistic. The takedowns were opportunistic. The submission and the finish, again, opportunistic. If you look back at the replay there, Gashi had a decision. 
He slid back to the fence and tried to get back up to his feet, but when he wasn't able to do it, he thought to himself, all right, I might be able to pop up if I can force my back and obviously turtle up. It's a good position to play turtle, but it can be a danger zone, and that's where Dan Coates was able to sneak that arm underneath the neck and catch the submission finish by RNC. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee called the stoppage to this bout. Two minutes, 17 seconds into the third round. Declaring your winner by submission with a rear naked choke. Dan Coates!